Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-2408. Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. The Foundation is to infiltrate and control law enforcement agencies in areas where GOI-0432 activity is suspected. Information regarding the anomalous activities of GOI-0432 is to be suppressed. Mobile Task Force Psi-13, Witch Hunters, has been tasked with the search for and elimination of GOI-0432 members. SCP-2408-1 In the event that a member is captured alive, they are to be thoroughly interrogated, using any means deemed necessary, prior to termination. The bodies autopsied and disposed of per hazardous waste protocols. Mobile Task Force Psi-9, Abyss Gazers, is to provide security to researchers at SCP-2408-3. Individuals attempting to gain access to SCP-2408-3 are to be terminated on site. Patrols are to search for potential access points which must be securely sealed when discovered. Armed Reliquary and Biological Containment Area 06 has been constructed beneath Moscow in order to contain and study SCP-2408-3. Description SCP-2408 designates several anomalies associated with GOI-0432, the Hunter's Black Lodge, an anomalous criminal organization and sarkic cult primarily active in the post-Soviet states. SCP-2408-1 are genetically normal humans capable of undergoing gross physical transfiguration. Known changes include mass increase by multiples of two and sometimes three, primarily muscle, increased bone density, an increase of testosterone production with levels approximately six times as great as in baseline adult males, an increase of adrenaline production with levels approximately four times as great as in baseline adult males, enlargement of organs in proportion to increased mass with the exception of the testes and adrenal glands, which increase in size well beyond what would be proportional and the brain which does not appear to change in size. The manifestation of non-human physicalities, for example, lupine, hercine, porcine, ursine, servine, and octopine features have all been recorded. An ability to shift between bipedal and quadrupedal movement. Amplified senses, seeing, hearing, tasting, and smelling things outside of human sensory limitations. Amplified strength, speed, and regenerative ability. Unlike Proteus Cronenberg syndrome, SCP-2408-1 instances are able to reverse these changes while maintaining cellular stability. It remains unknown whether or not these transformations can be maintained indefinitely. Complete transmogrification can be achieved within 10 to 30 seconds. SCP-2408 was discovered during Operation Falconrath. Operation Falconrath involved the infiltration of GOI-0432, known as the Black Hunter's Lodge or simply the Black Lodge. GOI-0432 has been linked to extortion, murder, robbery, gambling, prostitution, human trafficking, drug trafficking, weapons trafficking, and underground fighting rings. While these activities are not inherently anomalous, the anomalous capabilities of GOI-0432 has had an aberrant effect on their practice. These anomalies include the trafficking and distribution of anomalous pharmaceutical agents, primarily in the form of the anabolic androgenic steroid, Gnef. the intravenous injection of Gnef. triggers anomalous levels of muscle and bone growth, continue and or excessive use will result in Proteus Cronenberg syndrome and or death. Analysis suggests that this substance is harvested from the adrenal gland of an unidentified species of animal and has thus been classified as SCP-2408-2A. The trafficking and distribution of a potent narcotic and increasingly prevalent club drug. Normally sold in small glass vials, it is administered to the body through insufflation into the sinus cavities. Injection has been found to be universally fatal. Substance triggers various sensory hallucinations, increased heart palpitations, increased sexual arousal, and feelings of euphoria. Studies have shown the substance to be more addictive than heroin. These effects are non-anomalous, 
the substance likely created with profit in mind. But the substance itself appears to be derived from the spinal fluid of an unidentified species and has thus been classified as SCP-2408-2B. The trafficking and distribution of biological agents, including pathogens and toxins deemed anomalous by the Foundation. The creation and distribution of represents an exceptionally high-level threat, already classified as SCP. Information regarding the Red Death is presently only available on a need-to-know basis. Victims of GOI-0432 have been discovered impaled by large organic spines or completely torn apart. Cadavers display injuries suggestive of attacks by several different animals, such as bloody hoof prints wounds consistent with goring by a horned or tusked animal, and teeth marks of a large lupine organism. The Foundation became aware of GOI-0432 in wake of the USSR's dissolution, when many anomalies and documents relating to anomalies were transferred to Foundation control by GRU Division P. The existence of GOI-0432 would be further corroborated by former members of GRU Division P. It appears that they were unable to fully contain or neutralize the threat presented by GOI-0432 and its associated anomalies, with one source describing the apparent destruction of the organization on several occasions, only for it to reappear months later, seemingly strengthened. Document, GRU Division P, Department 5, GSI, Black Lodge. GSI Black Lodge, Division P, Department 5. Department Head, VP-9, GRU, DNR, 23, 1959. Responsible Personnel, Ivan P. Krupin. Detail. GSI Black Lodge designates a criminal organization which has augmented its illegal and deviant activity through anomalous means. GSI Black Lodge currently operates throughout the USSR but is suspected to be headquartered in Moscow at a location referred to by the criminal class as the Old Altar. Information about this location has been primarily gathered from right survivor Samuel T. Ankadinov, executed for criminal involvement once survival was deemed no longer necessary. Interview Log Division P, Department 5, 7 3, 1959, DNR 12 3. 1959. Attached to Document 12-3-1959. Attached is the transcript of interview of Samuel T. and Kadinov, a former Black Lodge recruit and survival of the rights. Interviewer is Due to the loss of subject's mandible, he is only able to respond via writing. Subject has little to no knowledge with regards to specific anomalies and appears to have suffered a great psychological trauma from his experience. Subject was recovered by workers from the sewage systems of Moscow's Arbat district. Where is the altar? I don't know. Below. I could not see. Blindfolded. What did you encounter within? Tell me everything you perceived. Old temple. Heathen. Black stone. Blood. Meat. The chanting. The drumming. What were you forced to do? Fight or die. No choice. For Orok. For the glory of the hunt. I was weak. Pathetic. Worthless. How did you escape? Among the dead. Blood-fed grates. Crawled away. Blood and meat and bones. Deeper. All was black. Deserved. Not strong enough. Should have been killed with honor. Agent of Mobile Task Force Psi-13 was officially tasked with the infiltration of GOI-0432 on April 11th, 1994 as part of Operation Falconrath. Mobile Task Force Psi-13 is a highly classified Joint Foundation Global Occult Coalition Task Force created as part of Project Citra Arca. Mobile Task Force Psi-13 is designed for the infiltration of Sarkic organizations and the termination of high-threat members. As part of Project Citra Arca, Mobile Task Force Psi-13 operatives are trained in counter-occult stratagems and the use of corrosive or incendiary armaments, each agent equipped with a Sig Sauer P-22-6 modified for the use of incendiary and corrosive ammunition. Under the alias Dominic Mishkin, 
Agent operated in Moscow was a contract killer in order to develop a criminal reputation and ultimately gain the attention of GOI 0432. On January 20, 1995, Agent was contacted by members of GOI 0432 and instructed to visit Red Lanterns is a popular nightclub or adult entertainment establishment located in the Golyanovo district. Employed as a Black Lodge front, it is suspected of being involved in forced prostitution, human trafficking, and the distribution of illegal, frequently anomalous, narcotics. It is believed that the local law enforcement has not intervened due to corruption and intimidation by GOI 0432. Agent was not equipped with a recording device due to the delicate nature of the mission. Instead, information was transferred to the Foundation via dead drop. Agent entered the nightclub at 9 p.m. January 25, 1995, equipped with a Sig Sar P226. He is observed being approached by a bouncer, which Agent proceeds to follow after a short conversation. An agent inside the nightclub reports seeing being escorted to an upstairs VIP suite overlooking the main floor. Agent does not exit the nightclub until 8 a.m. January 29, 1995. A message would later be delivered to the dead drop site at approximately 9 p.m. Missive, January 29, 1995. I apologize for the delay. I'll start from the beginning. I was brought upstairs and over to a circular table where six men and one elderly woman were seated. Otari, uh, Zver, Yosawa, leader of GOI 0432, sat at the far end, facing an empty chair. He told me to sit, and I obliged. Had a menacing air to him. Muscular, never removed his sunglasses. I suspect the others were higher-ups, but they kept silent for the most part. He dove right in skipped the pleasantries, said it was nice to see someone who didn't mind doing a bit of wet work. New blood, willing to spill blood, I remember him remarking. The Osava said he was aware that I had no brothers. That was rare and dangerous to work solo in Moscow. Informed him that I received a few offers, but told those cock-sucking bitches that they weren't worth my time. Paraphrasing his response, Think you're tough? You speak brave words, but maybe you're just another stupid cunt whose luck's about to run out. <laughs> he was hard to read. His tone and body language was firm, but hardly aggressive. Told him those gangs were weak. I responded, Why try my luck with the lowest cards in the deck? The elderly woman leaned to your server and whispered in his ear, she was noticeably pale and covered with unusual tattoos. Abnormal for a Russian woman her age. Made me feel a lot more uneasy than those thugs. He said, Your blood's wrong, Karova. Words stuck out to me. They're hard to explain. Look it up. But you've got balls. I'll give you one chance to prove yourself. There's going to be a little initiation. A nice way to cull the pussies. Again, paraphrasing. He snapped his fingers and said, For now, we drink and be merry. A waitress delivered a bottle of vodka and several glasses. As per tradition, we poured our own shots. Yosava raised a glass, and I returned the favor, and we drank. And in a blink, I find myself tied up naked on the cold floor, a hood over my head, and a proper ball gag in my mouth. Not so weird. Red Lantern says a kind of... BDSM theme going on. I had figured pouring my own drink would have avoided this exact sort of situation. Maybe the bottom of the glass had a layer of some kind of tranquilizer. Hard to say. Doesn't matter. It all gets a lot weirder. Eventually they came for me and carted me off. It was pointless to fight it. This went on for maybe an hour or two. I remember hearing the sound of old pipes and flowing water. The air was chill and damp, but there was a scent of rust and stagnant water followed by an earthly aroma. There were voices, and not all were speaking Russian. Zidas Nin, Vartas Exdask, well, something like that. Gibberish to me, but I'm certain it was Sarkic speak. They chained me by the neck to what I would later find to be a pillar or 
some kind of support beam. They untied the rope from my wrists and my ankles, pulled off my hood and removed the gag. I was in a dimly lit area resembling an amphitheater, appeared fairly ancient. There were four other men in similar circumstances to my own, chained by the neck to the pillar. There was also a large crowd, possibly in the hundreds observing from higher ground. Some wore red and white robes. Others were dressed in plain clothes or business attire. I felt a prick at the base of my neck, and everything after was a blur. I had chanting. I remember skulls cracked, eyes gouged, the feel of flesh between my teeth. Then celebration, drugs, food, women, and flashes of violence, not necessarily in that order. The memories are confused, just vague disjointed images. I apologize for the lack of details. I awoke in my apartment with my skin still caked in blood. Received a tattoo. Don't remember that at all and took me by surprise. Resembles a black cyclops skull with horns and tusks. Guess they've accepted me as one of their own. <laughs> I'll be sure to step out shirtless a few times. Have the surveillance up, snap a few photographs. See if it means anything. The Foundation would henceforth receive bi-weekly mission reports from Agent Missive, February 4th, 1995. Possible GOI 0432 front. 343465, Russian Federation. First job was gun running. More damning violence against the Abraxas arms. I'll have to report beyond that. In a lot of ways, the Black Lodge is like any other Bratva. They're thugs, plain and simple, and mostly driven by greed. They're also a lot nastier, which speaks volumes. You can't get much lower than Bratva. They discarded any trace of honor they had left in Serbia. The Great Mothers are certainly something you don't see in the world of organized crime. The Breivik call them hags, crones, witches, and the like. Though not to their faces. The Saki influence is clear with them. Twelve in number. They refer to each other as sisters, priestesses or some such. All wear the same outfits. A black seraphim, a stained leather apron, and a red and white shawl covering the shoulders and hair. Always barefooted. A lot of ink work, too. They aren't carcasts, but they still wield a great deal of clout over the Black Lodge. Missive, March 10th, 1995. Criminal underground has a literal meaning for the Black Lodge. There's another world beneath Moscow, abandoned Soviet bunkers. The Metro too, forgotten crypts, but it runs so much deeper than we knew. There's something downright ancient below. Suffice to say, I think Moscow was built atop a Sarkic temple. There's a dungeon, rusted torture equipment, pre-revolution, maybe a relic of the time of troubles. Regardless, it looks like the Sarkites are continuing the tradition. It's not nearly as deep and ancient as that wretched temple. Might be worth researching what buildings used to exist in the general location during the 17th century. I don't know much about these places yet. Information seems to be on a need to know basis, but I think I found a weak link in their chain. One of the great mothers, let's call her Five. Five shows signs of senility. She's gentle, friendly, and more importantly, naive. I've been able to glean some fairly significant intelligence from her, but I can't say much truth there is to any of it. According to her, the Black Lodge is something both new and old. Like the other Bratva, it began in the gulags of Siberia. During Suki Boini, Avgus Diosava, father of Otari, appears to have been responsible for the Black Lodge's resurrection in 51, something he encountered in the Siberian wilderness after leading a successful prison break. And that's when the witches sought him out, guided him, showed him what he had forgotten. I asked what she meant by that, but her mind wandered elsewhere. She seemed happy to have someone listen to her. A chance to feel nostalgic about the old ways. She told me to take this secret and handed me several old and frayed documents. Scriptures, but not the originals. Notes she must have transcribed from their primary sources. Fragmented, but something I think researchers would like to see. 
going to write this all down. Five also told me about Moscow's lost history. In another time, it was known by a different name, Aurochs Fall, a Sarkic settlement, and where the saint of war sacrificed himself for the blood of gods and tyrants. Never cared for this city, because there was always something sinister here. As she described the ancient city, her terminology was unusually anatomical in nature, referring to different locations as the heart, lungs, and skull of Aurochs Fall. Missive, April 18th, 1995. I'm making a special request to have my name, as well as what I've done, you'll know it soon enough, removed from the final report. If I successfully complete my mission and come out of this alive, then I request immediate application of amnestics. Most of my targets have been degenerates and criminals, potential rivals and the like. But this was different. A notari, that sick fuck, wanted us to leave a different kind of message. There are other Saki cults in Moscow, non-Black Lodge. I'm talking oligarchs, government officials. One of them sent word that someone in the Ministry of Internal Affairs, a man named wanted to crank down on the Black Lodge and was searching for allies among the few straight players left in this city. Target the family, a wife, a daughter, I don't kill them, make an example. The sort of scars that'll never heal. Missive, April 22nd, 1995. Spoke with Five again, still trying to clear my head of what happened. She's not like the others, and I'm beginning to question just how senile she really is. When she speaks of me and her faith, there is a tone of regret. I asked her more about sarcasm. Don't worry, I didn't say the S word. And when she tells me about Ion, I feel like a child again, listening to my babushka talk about Jesus and the old prophets, whimsical, and like her, skipping over the parts that involve glorified torture and murder. I'm no researcher, historian, theologian, or whatever, but I think these cults, this sarcasm, didn't begin this way. And I suppose that goes for most religions. Five talks about honor, friendship, virtue, and liberation. The gentle reindeer folk of Ari Um against the evil Deva. She's old, but I take it the faith changed long before her. Maybe she's begun to interpret the text differently. Maybe she's wrong, seeing good under layers of madness and atrocity. I can relate. It's always the same. Another failed revolution. Regardless, I suspect Five is an aberration. Perhaps that is the reason why she's confided in me. The others talk about the great mothers, say they can see things. And at times I wonder if she knows who I really am. And then my training tells me to eliminate her. <laughs> I think I'll ignore that training for now. Besides, no point talking at a source like her. Not yet, at least. P.S. The arena. It isn't just for initiation. Bloodsport disguised as ritual. Or oh, maybe ritual disguised as bloodsport. Six enter, only one comes out. A lot of the folks willing to pay to see and bet on it. Many wear the skulls of beasts and clean the suits of billionaires. Five's not a fan. It's like listening to people complain about the commercialization of Christmas. I know the Black Lodge has been classified as neo sarkic but the Great Mothers are pretty clearly proto sarkic They're traditional. Celebrate the high holidays and still think in terms of some greater good. The rest only care about how to make themselves stronger, wealthier, etc. Otari has an animal cunning to him, but he's hardly an intellectual. Nor does he appear to be a carcass, or at least the term hasn't been thrown around at all. Missive, May 1st, 1995. They've got me working in this dungeon. But they don't literally call it that. As I said before, I'm certain this place was in use well before the revolution. I wonder if the Tsars knew how many they more or less sacrificed atop an altar. Maybe they did. It wouldn't be a surprise. Sarcasm is a disease, and has more carriers than we ever imagined. They actually call it the basement's basement. <laughs> Somehow creepier than the dungeon. Torture. 
information gathering. Not that it's ever reliable. Examples are made. One last warning not to cross the Black Lodge. Organ harvesting too. You'd think these psychic types would have them growing from trees. Sometimes it is just to satisfy Otari sadism. There's one cell that's different. Asked Abovic about it. Said he didn't know and that he didn't need to know. So neither did I. A heavy door, different from the rusted bars of every other cell. Built with a small slit to peer through and another for food. Inside I saw a man, or what was left of him. His face. At, at least the eyes and nose were gone. The whole area carved out and now just a gaping hole. It reminded me of a cyclops, like the hole was gazing back at me. Kind of like that tattoo. So they may be related. He was sitting on the floor, nude and cross-legged. A muscular body covered in tattoos, scars and dried blood. Chain-linked hooks held his body in place, so he couldn't move even if he wanted to. I honestly thought he was dead at first, but I could hear his heavy breathing and see the slow expansion and reduction of his chest. I have no idea what to make of him. Missive, May 6th, 1995 Five let me in on a little secret. Otari has a brother, by the name of Mikhail. Same father, different mother. And he's that half-dead thing in the cell. Apparently, Otari and Mikhail have somewhat of a rivalry, but that isn't why Mikhail's been imprisoned and defaced. Five was vehement about that. It seems that Mikhail volunteered for some sort of ritual. Things get pretty fucked up here. Not sure if it's drugs or not. I'll leave a vial with this report. I'm seeing things. The angles in the club and everything below are wrong. The architecture gives me a headache if I stare at it too long. Yesterday I work in a bathroom stall with a half-eaten woman. The haulers at Red Lanterns, they look human one moment and the next, well, I know monster isn't really appropriate in this line of work, but I'm not sure how else to describe them. They stare at me with feral, hungry eyes. Five once called them Rusalki. I thought she was just being figurative, and now I'm not so sure. They slither off to the back rooms with fresh meat tailing behind. They'll be back an hour later, looking satisfied. But the men that go in don't ever come out. And when I watch the pit fights, there are things in the audience that aren't entirely human. There are sounds I can't explain, like a heartbeat. Sometimes roars something deep from below, where all the blood and corpses go. Agent was declared missing in action on May 28th, 1995. On June 4th, 1995, after much deliberation, Raids were conducted against multiple Black Lodge sites, including the Red Lantern's nightclub. During the assault, SCP-2408-1 were directly observed undergoing transfiguration. Despite their aggression and anomalously augmented combat prowess, the SCP-2408-1 threat was thoroughly neutralized through the use of incendiary armaments, with the Foundation unexpectedly suffering only minor casualties. As operations continued, it grew readily apparent that the Black Lodge had provided minimal manpower, a mere fraction of its total population in the region. The mission would result in the discovery of SCP-2408-3. SCP-2408-3 is a megalithic temple complex located within a large, deep cavern beneath the city of Moscow. Approximately 3,000 years old, it is the oldest standing structure in Russia and is the type site of the Sarkic culture group. SCP-2408's composition comes in two forms, inorganic and organic. Its inorganic portion encompasses the exterior and is constructed from stacked megaliths of gabbro, commonly known as black granite. Its organic portion fills the interior and is composed of bone, muscle, and viscera. Found among the grounds of the complex was a gladiatorial arena and a large altar. From the cavern ceiling dangled the remains of twelve elderly women, apparently disemboweled and hanged via their own intestines. Iron grates on the floor are similar to those found in meat processing plants and are likely designed to capture blood and general viscera. Access restricted to level 4, 
or authorized Citra Arca personnel. SCP-2408-4 is a humanoid organism located directly beneath SCP-2408-3, horizontally positioned with its arms and legs outwardly extended. Entity is apparently disabled or immobile and is likely brain dead, genetically human, albeit with many normally dormant genes being expressed. SCP-2408-4 displays many features that do not naturally occur among humans, save for certain genetic and almost universally fatal deformities. These include a single eye located in the center of the face, flat nasal slit rather than a protruding nose, tusks, horns, and various other corneous protrusions, three rows of sharpened teeth, enlarged relative to its size, and heavily muscled jaws, partial exoskeleton in coincidence with an endoskeleton, both skeletons being anomalously strong with a tensile strength comparable to carbine. SCP-2408-4's most notable anomaly is its size, with an estimated standing height of 300 meters and a weight of 70 to 72,000 tons, far larger than what should physically be possible for a terrestrial animal. Based upon the unusual length of its arms relative to the rest of its body, SCP-2408-4 likely moved with a gait not dissimilar from that of a gorilla. Further DNA analysis resulted in the discovery of certain inconsistencies which has resulted in the hypothesis that SCP-2408-4 achieved part of its anomalous biomass through the absorption of potentially more than 100,000 human and non-human organisms. SCP-2408-4 can only be directly accessed via three distinct shafts, two of which are equipped with mechanical lifts analogous to those used in mining operations. Each shaft connects to a specific region of the body, for example the skull, stomach, and the groin and it is feared that the creation of further shafts would result in structural instability, potentially endangering a large area of Moscow. The passage to the stomach, which lacks a mechanical lift, appears to directly connect to the arena, ultimately providing SCP-2408-4 with sustenance. The bronze tips of over 3,000 arrows, harpoons, and spears, belonging to a wide range of Eurasian cultures, have been extracted from its muscle tissue. An exact cause for SCP-2408-4's current disabled state remains unknown, and some portions of the body appear to be undergoing slow decay while other parts appear to be regenerating. SCP-2408-4's body is believed to be the source of SCP-2408-2A and SCP-2408-2B. Evidence indicates that prior to its discovery by Foundation operatives, Certain SCP-2408-2 producing organs and glands were surgically removed, such as the adrenal gland, pineal gland, testes, and hypothalamus, and likely smuggled out of Moscow by members of GOI-0432. The secure containment of these anomalous organic objects is of the utmost priority. At present, GOI-0432 has expanded its influence while SCP-2408-2B addiction has reached epidemic proportions, with longtime addicts developing unusual physical traits, for example leathery skin, black sclera, yellow irises, skeletal protrusions, and various other mutations. Unable to contain those addicted to SCP-2408-2B, Overwatch has ordered the capture and humane termination of affected individuals at designated kill sites. Remains are to be disposed of per hazardous waste protocols unless authorized for research. This order will remain in effect until SCP-2408-2B is properly contained and or eliminated. This concludes today's lecture. Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Susser Hintern, Zargaran, Professor Puffer, The Morrigan, Retalius, Chris Ball, Karim El Ashmoui, Big Onion Bean, Sio Dio Demnatus, Revenant, Brian Sanchez, Patrick Bailey, Matthew Gilmore, Eric Corbage, Kawaii Firekeeper, Longinus, Carcass Dethaqua, King Madding, James Saba, and NJ Vujak.
If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash thevolgan. Thank you.